Here's just a little prequel of what we're making today. Soft jaws for my milling vices. I'm making some guitar tuners. The machining of the tuners is a four op process. First op is done in just the flat jaws. Here's op number two, doing two tuners at a time. And then I flip those over in the vise. Op number three, op number four is in the mill right now. Now let's watch the chips fly. Welcome to Old Dog New Trick. Today we are messing around with soft jaws. I've taken a bunch of uh, aluminum stock that I had, a bunch of plate, and I've machined these blanks to the size of my soft jaws that I use. And I've got the machine all set up to cut the holes. I've got these designed so I can have both sides used. So let's start machining. All right, I've got my parallel set in the vise. My styrofoam in there to keep the parallel straight. Stop going in. Got a stop set up here. So now that we've got the blanks all done up, we need to do the machining to inlet for doing these parts here. Again, these are guitar tuners, and we're going to inlet this almost down to this plane in the part like that. This will be the fixed jaw and movable jaw, and we're going to do the center plane right down the center of the circle. Now this tapered thing here. I don't need to hold on to that, so I'm going to modify my drawing a bit so that that's just a big hole there. So I'll be holding on mostly by this round part and lining it up with these two flats. The rest will just be relief so the part doesn't get squished. And then we can machine off the bottom. We leave a kind of a tube sticking out of there and then the inside of that tube gets threaded. So that'll be in there like that. Let me show you how I draw that up on Fusion 360. So I've got my part here in Fusion 360. I've actually made a copy of the part and filled in all the holes and I'm going to use this as my model for making all the different soft jaws that I need to make. I think I need four different jaws for this. So first thing I'm going to do, all the jaws are going to have two parts in it. I'm going to create a sketch on that plane and draw a line from the center of that 90 degrees over, oh, that's 90 degrees, two inches. And then we're going to go to create pattern on a path. I'm going to select that body and we're going to select this path and we're going to go two inches and we're going to do two copies identical 
Okay. So now I've got two identical parts that are two inches apart. That's where we need to be for the design of my soft jaws. So now I've got my two identical parts. I am going to put an offset plane on here, right there. Okay. Now, right click, new component. Soft jaws. We've got that all good. I'm going to create a sketch. And where's that plane I just drew? All right, there. Yep, we're good. So, draw my jaws, 5.92 by 0.718. There, that looks perfectly centered. We'll draw the other one identical to that. How's that look? Hit the equal button, and we want them the same length. And then we'll click those two guys. We want them the same height. Now if we click collinear, click that guy and that guy, now they're the same relationship side to side. So now if we add a few dimensions, we can get everything all lined up. So I'm going to squish a parallel in between the two jaws. So the first dimension I'm going to do here is half the thickness of the parallel, they're eighth inch, so 0 0.0625, 16th of an inch from the center, and then that jaw to that jaw will be an eighth inch apart, 0.125, so I have that. Now if we click the center of that guy, and that guy, I don't want that two inches. So now we have the two parts evenly spaced in there, centered on that circle. I think that's all good. So now we can make those two bad boys. My soft jaws are 1.888. Weird dimensions again, but that's what we got. So there's our soft jaws. So now we can cut those out. So we're going to go up here, modify, combine. First one, we'll do this jaw. We'll click the two components. So we've got one target body selected, the soft jaw, two tool bodies selected, the components, and we're going to click cut and then keep tools because we got another one to make. Okay. Now we can do that again. So we will do the second one as the target body. And we're at cut, keep tools, and there we have that cut out of there. Click, hide, so there we got our two soft jaws. Let us let's look at that. That one first. So that one, I think I can do, eh, I can do most of what I need to do from the top. I may just go in from the side too and cut this radius here. That second one is a little more tricky. 
So we've got this wonky hole in there. That is for this part here. Don't know if you can see that. But we don't have all of that machined yet. We don't need to hold on to that, that uh, tapered part. So I'm going to go in there and draw draw some stuff on that jaw and cut it out a little more so we're not even touching that part. So maybe do it on this plane first. Yeah. So I'm going to create a sketch on that plane. Let's start out with just a big circle there to cut that out. And we'll do that again over here. Now, if I go in and draw a line, let's take there, to there, 90 degrees. And we'll do that three more times. We want to tangent to that, up to there. Tangent to that, up to there. Tangent to that. Tangent to that, up to there. Now I've got my drawing and need to go up to bodies, right click on that, and unselectable. Otherwise, those parts just keep getting in the way. So now, now I can probably measure that thing. From there to there. Five, nine, seven. Remember that number. So now we're going to do press pull. And distance we're going to go is oh, we want to cut negative 0.597 so now we have just a nice little thing to drop that part into I'm going to do just a couple more things here just to make things easier to fit. I am going to push those out a little bit just for clearance. Boy, that's confusing. That's good. Boom. So now let's bring that other guy in there. There. I can machine that out and be able to drop those parts in. So I have gone ahead and done the programming for the mill. I did add a couple of features to this. I, this little um, bit of round over here I added so I could get it in and out. And I'm pre-drilling right in this point here just to relieve the spot where the 
tool can't get in that square corner, but otherwise I got this all programmed to machine from the top. So if I go ahead and click simulate, get that pre-drilled hole in the corner. Using some pretty small tools here, so this uh, takes quite a while to machine this. Once that gets done running, I'm going to click off the body. So that's just the material. One thing I did do in there is the gap in between. I extruded both sides to the middle to uh, get rid of that gap there. That kind of helped me with programming for the machining. And it's just about done here. When it's done, I will click on the part and we'll have a wire form of the part in there so we can kind of take a look and make sure we've got clearance on everything of what the tool got out of there. There it's done. I'm going to turn on the wire form of the part. We can do a little inspection here. It looks like my little corner I did there has relieved that properly. There may be just a little spot right in that curve that the, the machining didn't get. And also right down in here. I don't think we quite got, but I think we can machine this now the way I've got it all drawn and programmed. And we may just have to go in there with a rotary tool and a die filer and relieve a couple of spots. But uh, we'll put this in the mill now. Fire up the machine, machine that out and uh, see what we come up with.
Well, that looks pretty good. I'm almost positive this will need to be tweaked. But Ooh, yeah. fits in there real snug. I'm going to put some marker on there. Push that in and out. See where the marker comes off. And see where I need to tweak those holes. But I think we got a darn nice start there. I've got my jaws out of the machine. And I knew there was going to be a couple of spots where I was going to have some issues. So, first off, I can feel that that is writing on this corner. I'm going to have to relieve that corner. And I know that this edge will need to be rounded a bit more. The first part was machined and I used a radius tool on there so the radius that the tool left doesn't exactly match the radius that was in the drawing. Now end product that doesn't matter but for these soft jaws it does. So I'm going to have to round that corner and take this one back a little bit. On the other side we've got a really nice fit and push it in and I've got just this little gap here that's being held up by this little corner right here so I'm gonna have to go in and relieve that I'm gonna go in there with a rotary tool and just use the icrometer get it to where I think it's gonna need to be we're gonna leave this surface alone this surface alone leave this alone and leave this whole thing alone and as long I can over relieve those as long as I don't touch those other surfaces I'll be fine here's a tool I've had for a long time that probably came off the back of a one of the sales trucks I bought this before Harbor Freight was everywhere before that I was just using your normal rotary tools Dremel tools I tried them all none of them would last so this is a knockoff of a Fordham tool it's got a variable speed foot pedal so it gets up pretty fast, but you can just knock it down to low RPMs. It works great. This one is starting to go on me. It gets hot down here. I took it apart and repacked the bearings, but I think we're due for a new one. Going in there with this burr. I'm looking to see when that bottom's right there. We'll look for clues on this. I think. Maybe this a little bit. Well, 
when I wiggled that in there, I can see a faint line of brass right there. I think we got it. Oh yeah. So that gives me my soft jaws to hold the parts. Now, I could have flipped the parts, gone in from the top, and done some of that material removal, but like I said before, I machined the part with a radius end mill and that end mill didn't exactly match all of the radiuses in the part so there was still going to be some cleanup. So by doing that cleanup by hand with the rotary tool, um, I, I was actually able to do that quicker than I could have done all the programming on the mill anyway. So that worked out pretty good. I just stayed away from the surfaces that were critical for both holding the part and indexing the part. And now I got some uh, pretty nice soft jaws. I have to make about three or four more of these. I can flip the part and do another set of soft jaws in the same material. Just flip them over in my vise and I'll be able to use them that way. So. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe and like the channel and we'll see you on the next build.